We praise God for bringing us back to another week of Bible equipping um, school of theology. We are sorry for the, the last week we weren't able to have a class because this room was not available. We praise God that now we are able to continue and we pray that God will continue to allow us to continue our study with basic doctrines knowing men. So before we begin, let us sing, Take My Life and Let It Be. begin this time with a word of prayer let us pray our father in heaven we thank thee for seeing us through so many events in our life thank you for all the trials for all the testings thank you for all the lessons you teach us and we thank thee that we can experience how good you are in our lives we pray that thou wilt forgive us for all the times that we did not believe in you, in the times that we doubt you, because sometimes there are problems, there are difficulties. We are sorry for the times that we wanted to do our own way. We did not want to follow you. We pray, Lord, that you will help us now, especially as we will look into the study of thy word we pray that you will be with us again help us guide us we pray that we will learn much and we pray that you will sustain so that the lessons can be continued every week so that there will be no more um, stopping of the lessons so we commit this time into thy loving hands in jesus name i pray amen um, let us open our Bibles to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay, let us open our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we will read from verse 1 to 28. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 28. Let us read this with understanding. Okay, let's read verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. 
For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also, as, one, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preached, and so ye believed. Now if Christ be preached that he arose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept for since by man came death by man came also the resurrection of the dead for as in Adam all die even so in Christ shall all be made alive but every man in his own order Christ the first fruits afterward they that are Christ at his coming then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him, that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. We thank God for the reading of his word and may God bless us for the reading of this word. Okay, so this passage of scripture tells us of how because of Adam, all will die, right? We learned that two weeks ago, how that because our first parents, Adam and Eve, sinned against God, all the men that were born afterward now has this sinful nature. It is passed down as we are born, as we are conceived in the womb of our mothers. This sinful nature is already passed down to us. Yet, we have hope because of Christ. And that one we will touch on later. First, I would like to deal or I would like to tell all of you about what we must memorize for this semester's um, 
study. So last semester, we were on the topic of basic doctrines, knowing God. And so we memorized what is God. For this semester, we will have two, two questions to memorize. And the first is, okay, I must write bigger so that all can see. So this is the first question that we will memorize. What is the chief end of men? Okay, this will come out for the exam. So that's why we will we will learn it earlier. I think around this time last time also we started to learn about what is God. This time we have two to memorize. So we will start memorizing earlier. I think we have um, touch on this before this is from the Westminster Shorter Catechism last sem we talked about Westminster it is a place and how this godly man wanted to come together to know more about God's word and they wanted to answer questions of the people questions that they themselves also want to know so they searched the scriptures and then they made this question and answer book so first the first question in this booklet is what is the chief end of man what is the purpose of man why was man made what is his purpose what were we made and what is the chief number one end and is what we will be doing until the end of our lives what is the chief purpose of men and our answer to that is Okay, so this is the answer for this question. What is the chief end of man? Man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. This is the purpose why man is made. He is to glorify God. Why are we existing today? Why are we alive today? Why did God create man? It is to glorify God glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. I think you will um, deal on this deeper someday, what it means to glorify God and to enjoy Him. So I hope you will take note of this. This is um, question number one for our essays for the exam. So we will have two essays, this one. What is the chief end of man? Man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. Okay, let's try memorizing. We will start first with this. If you were still copying, you can just pause the video so that you can copy the full. Okay, let's begin. 
What is the chief end of man? Man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. Okay, so that is our first question that we have to memorize. I think this is important since we are doing on basic doctrines knowing men. So what is the purpose of men? So we must memorize this. This is important. As important as also for what is God because we were studying about God. Okay? So now I will erase this. I will move on to the second question. Our second question we will it will be what is sin I think we have also touched on this before what is sin then the answer to that is Okay, this is the second question. What is sin? Sin is any want of conformity unto or transgression of the law of God. Okay, we'll try to understand this because it's easier to memorize if we understand. If we don't understand, we just memorize. It is very hard because we don't even know what we're reciting. So, sin is any want. What is want? Sin is want means... Maybe I'll use the blue pen. This is, just, this is just for us to understand. This is not part of what you will write. So, sin is any lack. Sin is any lack. Yung pagkukulang. Sin is any want or lack of conformity. What is lack of conformity? Conformity comes from the word conform. What is conform? Conform means... You have to follow. You have to abide. This is what he tells you. You must conform. You must follow. You must pattern after. Right? So, lack of conformity unto. So, it says that sin is when you are lacking to obey. When you are not obeying. You lack in obedience. Okay, lack in obedience to the law. You are not obeying the law. You are lacking. The laws, the law of God tells you that you must do this, but you are not doing it. You are lacking. You are not um, obeying. Yes. Or the transgression of the law. What is transgress? I think we already know this word. Transgress is to cross the line we are told that you are only supposed to stay until here but you cross the line i think we already touched on this when we talked about the omission the sin of omission and the sin of commission right omit it's to take out 
So that is when you do, you don't obey. You don't want to follow. Right? That is the omission. Commission is you commit. You commit the sin. So that is also the same as here. The transgression of the law of God. Okay? So I hope we all understand this answer. So what is sin? Let us recite together. Sin is any want of conformity unto or transgression of the law of God. Okay, so that is what we have. Okay, you can try to memorize. Okay, let's try. What is sin? Sin is any want of conformity unto or transgression of the law of God. Okay, so I hope you all can see that. Hope you all can copy. I tried to write bigger. I think you all should be able to see it this time. Okay. So, I hope you will start memorizing. Please, of course, please do not be stressed. You still have so much time to memorize this. So, you can start to memorize this. Whatever, if you, if you have time to, to just think or you're walking to the supermarket or you're walking the dog or you're washing the cat. If you want, you can just memorize it in your head. Practice. If you're washing the dishes also, you can memorize. Okay, so uh, two questions. What is the chief end of man? And what is sin? Okay, so I hope please remember it. Please do not forget to memorize it for your exam. Of course, you know your exam is not that hard. You all know that it is quite easy, right? Uh, but some still answered the essay in their own way, with their own words. Uh, that one I understand because that was the first one. But I hope for this time, you all will answer according to what we have learned here. Okay, so now we will go and revise with what we have learned two weeks ago. I hope you, you have not forgotten everything. Um, so we were talking about sin and how sin came into the world. How first it was through Lucifer. His pride, he was the chief angel, he knew he was beautiful, and so he desired to be God himself. He wants to be above God. He wants to be the one sitting on the throne. He wants to be the highest. And so that was the problem, his pride. And then he possessed the serpent, this animal, of all the animals that God created, the serpent was said to be the wisest. And so, um, Lucifer, now Satan, possessed the serpent. And then he tempted Adam and Eve. And then we learned that Adam and Eve had a neutral heart. Neutral heart. Okay? Okay. They are able to do good and they are able to do evil. They can choose. But they have not come to that decision yet. God gave man a free will, right? God did not make us like robots. We don't have a remote control to control us. God gave us the free will. That is part of God's goodness to us. He gave us the choice. He gave us a free will. And then... To test men, 
whether he will really choose to obey or disobey, he set the two trees of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. And then we know what happened, right? How does Satan tempt us? Okay, please remember this. I think if you remember, the question mark looks like Satan, right? First, he will agree with you. He will say, yes, that is what God says. And then we, later, he will say, really? Then later, he will disagree with you. He will say, no, that is not what God's word says. And we saw that when the serpent tempted Eve. At first, he say, yeah, right? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Say, the serpent was more subtle, he was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. He said unto the woman, yes. Yea, hath God said? Yes, did God really say, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So first he will seem to agree with you. Oh, as if he's asking that because he don't know. Oh, did, did God really say this? And then the woman said, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And we learned here last two weeks ago that when Eve answered the question, Satan knew that she did not know the word of God well. God did not say that if you touch it, it, you will die. God said that if you eat it, you will die, not touch. And so because he saw that Eve was not sure of God's command, he went to attack. He said, really? Did God really say that you could touch and then you will die? Of course, God did not say that. He said, no, God did not say that. And then that is when he tempted Eve that actually God is telling you not to eat that because if not, you will become like God. Okay, and we also um, dealt with what we learned that in verse 5 of chapter 3 in Genesis, that the word gods here, okay? Satan said, if you eat it, you will be as gods. When he said it to, when he said it to Eve, he meant or he, the meaning that was in his mind when he told Eve was, you will become like gods, small g gods. But then for Eve, she understood it as God, capital G, God. This is because in Hebrew, in the original language, it is the same word. Okay, it is the same word. And so, we see that Satan is really very clever. He used this same word so that for Eve, she thought that this was what Satan was saying. But actually, this was what Satan meant. And because of that, right, we, we also see here there's nothing wrong with wanting to be like God, right? Do you, do you want to be like God? It is not that we want to be God, but we are told in, to, in the Bible, right, that we are to be holy as God is holy. We have to love as God is loving. We have to be um, gracious. We have to be honest. We have to be righteous. We have to be good as God is also righteous and good. And so 
there's actually nothing wrong when what he was thinking but because he did not know god's word enough he did not know god's commandment god said do not eat it means don't eat it no matter how much the what the serpent will say no matter how much what other people say if god says don't do it means don't do it but eve did it and then what happened adam also adam what happened was that when eve ate she also gave to adam and then adam also just ate and he did eat and so man plunged into sin total depravity total depravity Total depravity means we are totally sinful, totally unable to do anything that is good. We only want to do sin now. That is our desire, that is our passion. And it may sound very bad, you might not want to acknowledge, you might say, Oh, I can do good. I, I am not. Look at the unbelievers out there, they can also do good. They do. They give money to the poor. They are helping others. Unbelievers also can do good. We. They are not totally depraved or they are total depravity. But we know that in those good, those good that unbelievers do, there is a motive behind it. And because unbelievers are not cleansed. They are not clean, their sins are not forgiven, their hands are still dirty with sin. No matter how good they do, that good works will be stained with sin. Okay, imagine if you if you go gardening. Okay, you go gardening, especially if you really do uh, replanting or you added fertilizer or you were weeding, you will have soil in your hands, right? You'll have soil in your hands. And then you have a white shirt inside the house. So after you after you you were doing gardening, you went into the house and then you saw that all your because you did the laundry, you wash the clothes, all the white clothes that you wash oh already dry. So after gardening, after outside, you went into the house. You saw, oh, my white clothes are already dry. Then you went to fold the clothes. You didn't wash your hand. You went to fold the clothes with your hands full of mud, full of soil. What do you think will happen? Yes, it is a good deed. You fold the dry clothes so that you can keep it into your cabinet. Yes, it is good. But your hands that you use to fold it is dirty. And so it made the clothes dirty also. Same with unbelievers. Because they are not washed, they are not cleansed of their sins. They do good, but that is still not worthy before the eyes of God. We are not able to do good anything uh, to do good at all because of sin. Especially because when Adam fell into sin. And why is this? Why is it that just because of Adam, all of us also fall into sin? You might say, it's not fair. Right? It's not fair. I, 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 did, not, I did not eat the fruit. Why am I also included in this punishment? Why should I also go to hell? I did not eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If I was in the garden of Eden, I would not eat the fruit. Do you think so? Right? If, if you were in the garden, do you think you will also not eat? Okay, we have to acknowledge, we have to acknowledge who we are before God. That's why 
That's why we're doing this study of basic doctrines knowing men. Let us see ourselves before God. Who are we really, truly? Do you think that you can actually do any good? Can you say that if you were in the Garden of Eden, you would not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? You will not be tempted by Satan? Do you think so? So actually this study of knowing man is very good. We know, we see ourselves honestly, we see ourselves before God, and then we realize we cannot be proud at all. Who are we to think that we are so good? Who are we to think that we are worthy of anything? We are not worthy of anything at all. We are of all men most miserable because of sin. And we know that we are weak. We are weak before God. We are nobodies. That's why when we know ourselves, it also helps us to know how to approach our loving Heavenly Father. How dare we point fingers at Him or tell Him, Why did you do this to my life? Why did you plan this? This is all wrong. This is not according to my plan. We cannot say that. Who are we before God? Right? So, we say, Why am I part of the punishment? I did not eat of the fruit. We have this representative principle which we cannot deny. Okay, is that big enough? Representative. Now, do we understand what is representative? Representative is someone who will represent it comes from the word represent and if you want to know some more it, it is from the word present so when you present yourself but then if you are not able then someone will re-present you represent you so for example if if you were invited to go and um, join some meeting or you were, you were invited by your relatives for the birthday party of your relative but then you cannot go because you are busy on that day or you really have something important to do and so you ask someone else to go for you there and then you say you represent me instead of me going I'm busy I cannot so you ask someone else to say to represent you to say that instead of me it will be him and I hope uh, her or him and he will or she will be the one to take my place okay so that is representative principle okay so what is this representative principle this representative principle is seen even in today Okay, example, Olympics, right? You know, Olympics, that is the competition, a worldwide competition of all the athletes, the sportsmen in the whole world. And they send one representative for each country, according to each sport. It can, it can be more than one if it's a, if it's a soccer team or if it's a basketball team, they will represent the whole country, right? If, if um, like for us, uh, if, I think, who, who was that? Hey, Hedelin or something. The first Olympian, uh, not first Olympian, we had many um, representatives of the Philippines to the Olympics, but she was the first one to get gold. I, I know you all know her name. I think it's Heidelin or something like that. DS. She represented Philippines. Only one. Because 
I cannot go there for you. I don't know how to lift that heavy thing. Or I don't know. Do you know how to weight lifting? I think it's very hard. So much training work to do. We don't have muscles for that. So she represented Philippines for us. She worked hard. Um, she exercised. She practiced many times. And then she went for the competition. And she won the gold, the first place. Because she won, the whole of Philippines won with her for that weightlifting competition in the Olympics. So that is representative. She representative Philippines. She represented for the whole country. Right? Because not the whole country can go there. Because not everyone of us also know how to do. So she represented for us. So that is the representative principle. It is a fair principle. It's a fair system. We all know about it. Uh, we do not say it is not fair that she is the one. We are happy instead that she is the one because she won for us. Um, we also have ambassadors right ambassadors of the philippines we send our ambassadors to other countries to represent philippines um, so this representative principle is in this world god also set it up this is what god used and we cannot say that it is unfair that only one person will represent for the whole no it's not it is something that is used something that is natural god designed this and he designed it in the form of Adam and Eve. And so Adam, <clears throat> Adam represented the whole of humanity. He represented all men when he went through this test of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. So Adam was the representative. And because Adam was the representative and because Adam fell into sin, all of us also join with him. All of us also now have this sinful nature. This is the representative principle right we learned about how he was tempted in the garden together with eve and then we also talked about how <clears throat> this temptation is a threefold temptation do you remember okay i hope you will remember what is the threefold temptation that we learned about in first john remember first john chapter 2 15 to 17 we talk about the Last of the flesh, last of the eyes, and the pride of life. Okay, so that was how Satan tempted Eve. Then, if you remember, we said that we will also look at another representative. Okay, so our first Adam failed. He got zero. And we all failed also because of him. But then, God is so loving. God is so gracious. He loves us not because we are good, not because we did, not, we did something. But it's just out of his own goodwill and pleasure. Just because he wants to do it. And so that was what we saw in 1 Corinthians just now when we read. First Corinthians chapter 15. We talk, uh, we read verse chapter 15, verse 22. We said that for as in Adam all die. Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. We died because of Adam, spiritually dead. But because of Christ, 
we became alive. And how did the Lord do this? How did Christ do it? How did Christ save us? First, we will look into how Christ was also tempted. And so we talked about the temptation. Okay. We talked about the temptation. Yeah. So there was the last of the eyes, a lot of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life. And then we will compare Adam. And Christ. Okay. So we have already. Loss of the flesh, loss of the eyes, and the pride of life. Okay, so we already uh, revised this. Now we will look into Adam. Now Adam, how was he tempted with together with Eve? We see that back again in Genesis chapter 3 that what? Verse 6 When the woman saw that the tree was good for food she saw, she looked and so she saw that the tree was good for food and so what, there was this last of the flesh good for food she she saw the fruit and she was oh not so bad looks good and so here last of the flesh saw the food and then next and that it was pleasant to the eyes it was appealing to the eyes it is not something that you will look and then you hmm no all right sometimes there are food unfamiliar food that you don't know and then you look at it you look with disgust yuck or like balut do you eat balut right some some people some people don't like balut some people also love balut but yes some might say mm, disgusting but then others also say it's good pleasant to the eyes verse 6 genesis chapter 3 pleasant to the eyes so this was the temptation it was good it appealed to the eyes of eve and even of adam because adam just accepted it and then what happened after that satan some more tempted them that they will be like gods so there was this pride oh i want to be like god and so Because of this, the temptation of food, it was pleasant to the eyes, it was appealing, their stomachs maybe now hungry, or maybe they did not feel hungry yet because there was no sin. But yes, it was good to the eyes, there maybe their eyes grew open, very big, and then they also wanted to be like God. <clears throat> there was this pride. And so... That was how Adam fell into sin. Because he obeyed his wife Eve. He, he did not tell her, no, we cannot eat. I don't know also where he was. While, while, while the woman was talking with a serpent, a serpent also knows that he shouldn't go to Adam because Adam would know the command more. So he went to Eve because he knows that Eve doesn't really know what God commanded. So that's when they fell. And we notice that when we do not know the word of God, 
we will fall into sin because we do not know what God wants us to do. We just do our own way. We are not sure what God has commanded. And at the same time, some of us, we do know God's word, but then we are not so sure or we don't want to be sure so that we can still do what we want. Right? There are also times like that. We have to love God's word. The word of God is what will keep us away from sin. It is exemplified. We can see this in the testimony of Adam. And then now, Christ. Christ also underwent, or also he went through the these temptations. We see that in Luke chapter 4. Okay. In Luke chapter 4, it tells us of the temptation of Christ. He is like the second Adam. The first Adam failed. God sent a second Adam, a second representative for us because he loves us. And how was he tempted? Okay, in verse 1 in Luke chapter 4, it says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness being 40 days tempted of the devil and in those days he did eat nothing when they were end when they were ended he afterward hungered the devil said unto him if thou be the son of god command this stone that it be made bread so after all the many years that has passed from genesis until the now time in the gospels to all the years satan's tactic Satan's way of deceiving, Satan's way of tempting us is still the same. He tells Jesus, if you are really the son of God, turn this stone into bread. He was still tempting him by the lust of the flesh. You are hungry. Why don't you turn this stone into bread? Then you will also think, yeah, what's so wrong about turning stone into bread, right? I mean, God is powerful. Jesus is powerful. He can do a miracle. He can turn stone into bread. He can even make stones to talk if he wants to. What's so wrong about turning stones into bread? This is because if you obey Satan, means you are acknowledging him that he is higher than you. You are obeying Satan, which is sin. You are obeying the lust of your flesh. And here we again now see the second one. Okay. But Jesus, the first temptation, okay, for, for Adam when he was tempted with food, he he failed. He saw with his eyes that it was good. He failed. Then he had this pride because they want to be like gods he failed but when for jesus he was tempted with bread he was tempted to to turn stone into bread jesus was able to answer him back with the word of god he knew the word of god that's why again we see that if we know the word of god it is what helps us to overcome sin maybe you are struggling with something Maybe you are struggling with a sin that you cannot overcome. You already asked God to forgive you about this, but then the next day you did it again. Maybe it is the sin of gossiping, the sin of lying, maybe pride, right? Laziness. Jesus answered him saying in verse 4, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. He knew God's word and so he was able to answer back he was able to defend himself he was able to refute he used the sword back at Satan and so Christ passed the first test then next the devil taking him up into an high mountain the devil showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time 
devil said unto him, I all this power will I give thee, and the glory of them that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Now here Satan showed Jesus the glory of the world, the, the riches, the kingdoms. So it has to do with the eyes, right? He showed he showed Jesus all these things. And then he tempted Jesus. If you want to be the king over all this, if you want to be the one who will control all this kingdom, I, I can give this to you. You want to be the king of kings of the world? I can give you this. I am the one in authority now, but I can give you. That is what Satan said. He, 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 I, I'm sure he doesn't know what he's talking about, does he? Satan is not the king of kings. He is not the one who gives power. He is under God. He is even below God. He is Satan. He has no power to give. And so, uh, here in verse 8, Jesus answered him, saying, If you only worship me, if you bow down to me, I will give you all this and jesus said get thee behind me satan for it is written thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shalt thou serve so jesus knows the bible he also knows which verse to apply which verse to use at a certain time right so for us it is important really to study the word of God and to know how to use the word of God. It is no point knowing it in our heads and then in the end we don't live it, we don't practice it, we don't use it when we face temptations. The word of God is a living word. It is practical. It is alive. It is not just words on the Bible. It is the word of God that is very alive it is with us you can use it you can um, read it you can be blessed by it you can conquer sin because of the word of god so it is good for us to know the bible and to also know when to use it to apply it okay and then verse 9 again and he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him if thou be the son of God cast thyself down from hence for it is written mm, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone notice here that Satan also knows the word of God see he says, ah, you use the word of God to me. In verse 10, he also said, for it is written. Satan also knows the word of God. And he can twist it. He can use it to deceive you. Right? Remember how he tempted Eve? He said, did God really say that? Said, no, God did not say that. He can deceive you he is deceitful he used the word of god and then jesus said unto him it is said thou shalt not tempt the lord thy god and when the devil had ended all the temptation he departed from him for a season so first the bread then all the kingdoms that he saw with his eyes And then the pinnacle. Jesus passed the test. The pinnacle. Jesus was brought up to a very high place. He was brought up to the top, one of the highest bu buildings during that time, to the top. And then Satan said, Jump down from the pinnacle, show off yourself to the people that you are God, that angels will come and save you. Show off yourself. Pride. But Jesus said, you shall not tempt the Lord thy God. And 
Jesus passed the test. Jesus passed the test for us. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that a comfort? When Adam failed, we were hopeless. We were now doomed. We are now condemned to be in hell forever. But because of Christ, this new representative, the second Adam, because he passed the test for us, he fulfilled all righteousness. He obeyed the law. He did not sin against God. He did it for us so that when we trust in him, when we believe on him, when we say, yes, Lord Jesus, be my representative, you can be forgiven of your sins when you believe in his blood that he shed on the cross and now you are changed first your destiny is to hell now that destiny is removed that, that condemnation is removed and now you are destined to go to heaven because of christ because of this representative that is if you receive him if you don't receive him if you will not want him to be your representative you still want adam who failed then surely you will remain condemned, you will remain to go to hell. But we really thank God, especially for us believers. We accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our representative. He is the one, He is the only Savior that can bring us to heaven. And so, this is where we end for our first hour. We will come back again for the second one.